Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're going to start first with a quick look over the last week. So beginning on the 29th, I'm going to animate for you satellite-derived precipitation. And what you're going to notice is that throughout much of the last week, we're going to see that a lot of southern Brazil only had scattered showers and storms, and much of Argentina was very dry. So if you just watch this move now through the 3rd, 4th, and into uh, the early morning hours here on the 5th, we, we don't see much precipitation across southern Brazil and Argentina. Maybe a bit more normal monsoonal rainfall a bit farther to the north. But if we take a look at what the temperatures did over the last week, we were cool in pockets of southern Brazil, cool in Argentina compared to normal. Whereas, and this was pretty well forecast, whereas this region here uh, from Mato Grosso through Tocantins, Bahia, Minas Gerais, this area did actually see temperatures anywhere between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius above normal. So we were kind of split on our temperatures. So despite being cooler farther to the south, excuse me, drier farther to the south, we were cool there as well. Looking over this next week, the models have actually done a fairly good job picking up on this pattern. We were noticing uh, throughout the week last week that the, the, the models were really suggesting that Argentina was going to see a stalled out frontal boundary. I'll show it to you in just a moment here that we expected to see quite a bit of, of scattered storms producing quite a bit of heavy rain. While much of southern Brazil was going to be on the drier side of things, we were expecting a bit more normal monsoonal precipitation here. Uh, and uh, so when we look now out over the next week, we, we still can see that much of Mato Grosso here is going to be seeing above average precipitation as forecast by the European model. And that's been consistent as well. But if I show you how this all plays out, let's just uh, get going here with the operational European model. What I'm going to watch most carefully is this low right here, okay? Because as it dips farther to the south and then goes right to the south here, look at that, uh, it eventually stretches out and produces this stalled out frontal boundary. Now that frontal boundary sitting here is due to two separate lows and a big area of high pressure on this side. And so this frontal boundary just slowly migrates to the north in this area and watch it just produce showers on throughout this week on Thursday into Friday and now into the next weekend. So if I kind of just rock back, that's a slow moving front on which we could get some heavy rainfall here as we work our way toward the end of this growing season for uh, Argentina. But during this time period, that high pressure cell is keeping much of southern Brazil over on the drier side of things. So that's why when we come back to this, we saw this area dry, but that slowly moving frontal boundary there moving through Argentina, bringing in at times much above average precipitation. Now from there, let's just go out and look at week two only. And what we're going to see in the week two time period is that the model seems to be responding to a couple of things. I could start to point toward the Antarctic Oscillation, but I don't think that it's the more dominant control. La Nina is faded. The Southern Oscillation Index is actually zero. And what we notice is that the MJO right now seems to be the more dominant factor. Now, if the MJO stays where it currently is, which means it's avoiding the Indian Ocean. I can I can certainly buy in, uh, excuse me, to this drier pattern here in southern Brazil and in Argentina going out into week two. And the reason for that is if the MGO is staying up here, well, in phase six, seven, and eight through much of the next 15 days, those phases, if we look historically at what they give us, uh, you'll see that they're drier south and wetter to the north. And again, we do see, whoops, if we do see coming back here, that this area is forecast to be on the wetter side of things moving forward. It's drier in southern Brazil and drier in Argentina. So to put that story together, let's look at the long-range European model here. Because when it was run uh, back on April the 1st, what we saw in the model was that it was really going to try to stay, I don't know, somewhere in this vicinity and not get you know, on the bottom half of this diagram, which is over here in the Indian Ocean. That would be where we would see the MJO if it was in phases two, three, and four. And the significance of this uh, comes back to our correlation maps. So remember, if the MJO, uh, you know, does go over into phases two, three, and four, what we see is a transition in phase two of the wetter conditions here, then into southern Brazil, Argentina, and it tends to stay down there into phase four while we get drier, especially in phases four and five in Brazil. Now, I had had some concern just thinking about this, that the MJO was, was going to come around like this and pop back out over here into phase four and five. And that's still possible. And if it does that, there would be you know a lot to be worried about here 
in uh, for the safrina crop because we know that going from April into May, which would be about the time frame it would do that, we would then be seeing far less precipitation uh, at the end of the monsoon. It's normally coming down anyway. So I brought this up last week as a, as a major concern of mine. But just coming back to this, you saw that the models instead wanted to keep it over there in phase six, seven, and eight. And it tends to be more favorable for wetter conditions here uh, in, 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 in much of central and, and northern Brazil, not southern Brazil and Argentina. So we're getting some consistency here overall with the models. Now, what I, I'm looking forward to giving you another update about this on Thursday is going to be we'll have new data out for, well, this takes us out to May 5th. And you notice that the models uh, from now through May 5th are drier to the south. You're going, but wait a minute, you just said drier in Argentina. Well, all of this is coming, I think now, in just the next five to seven days. So does it dry out after that? It appears that it does, but we maybe keep more normal precipitation farther to the north. So I'm concerned about the finish of the crop in southern Brazil, the safrina corn that is planted, you know, right here in Paraná, as an example. If they continue to see drier conditions, what does that mean toward its quality? And then I'll just add one more piece to this. This is what the uh, GFS extended forecast looks like out to May the 4th. And again, we see right in through here, maybe better precipitation, but southern Brazil, uh, then getting into Argentina, a lot of this is coming right now over the next five to seven days. So are we drier? It does appear that the models are picking up on that pattern. So as we watch the safrina crop go and the full season crops become ready for harvest, it appears that Mother Nature is kind of pulling back on the more ideal conditions to get this crop to finish. So we'll keep an eye on it and see what this does to total production and yield coming out of South America. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks.